Hi guys, designers, artists, creators. Welcome to another one of my digital illustration tutorials. This is Les, I'm an illustrator and in this video I'm going to show you how you can take your color digital art and elevate it to the next level within five simple steps. So in my previous videos I have shown you some quick and effective methods on how to color in and add shading to your artwork using Photoshop. Now with this tutorial I want you to take all of my previous lessons on board and I am going to go over some additional tips and tricks which will create an even better looking digital painting. Sounds very advanced but I will keep it as brief and simple as I can. If you have been following my methods to create digital art based on my two previous videos you would probably end up with an image that's structured similar to this. So I got the line work, I got layers for the base colors and we have some highlights and shadows. It looks pretty good, but with taking my following tips on board, we can take a composition that looks like this and turn it into this. First thing I'm going to do is vectorize the line work by copying and pasting the layer onto Illustrator. I'm going to click on image trace and by default, the tracing that I will end up with is this simple black and white vector image. I click expand, then with the direct selection tool, I click on the white background element, then I go select same fill color. So now I have all the white parts selected. I want to get rid of all this to get the clean light work so I, I hit delete. I copy and paste this back to Photoshop. The reason I did this was to have a cleaner version of the line work. I use my arrow keys to line up this new element to everything else. Then what I like to do is copy this layer go to hue, saturation and take the lightness to maximum to get a white version of the line work. I keep this under the black one and with my arrow keys I take it to the side ever so slightly and set this layer to overlay. It's a little thing but now the drawing feels like it's got more dimension to it. Ok now I want to create a background shade on the wall. My philosophy when it comes to colors, if you don't know what color to go with, just go in with, with loads of different colors. I go in with a big bold brush to create a bit of a mess here, then I give this a very heavy blur. Now the beauty of this is if you don't like the gradient you ended up with you can go to image adjustments and play with the hue and saturation slider until you get something you like. Then what I want to do is create a 3D effect by adding some heavy shadows to objects that are sticking out. For example these shelving units on the right as well as the cupboard on the left. What I do here is I draw out angular shapes with the polygonal lasso tool then fill it with black and blur them out. I use Gaussian blur as well as motion blur here. Direct the motion in line of your light source here. This is for me is quite obvious. I got a big bright window in the middle of my composition so all the shadows have to feel like they are moving away from the light if that makes sense. Ok, I want to do the floor here as well as give this table a big shadow. To imitate the table shape I start out with simple rectangles with the polygonal lasso tool again. Then I go edit, transform and perspective to imitate the image's perspective flow. Give this shape a heavy blur. I also take the opacity down a little and play with the layer modes. Try overlay if you think normal mode is a bit too harsh. I also give some shadows to some of these scattered around objects. I do this by going back to the base color layer, then I select things with the magic wand. I duplicate these onto a new layer behind the base layer 
go to image adjustments and take the lighting down to the minimum to end up with black shapes. Then you guessed it, play with opacity and blur settings. Now I want to do the exact same thing with a white rectangular shape to create the effect of light coming through the window. I quickly mimic the window shape with the select tool and use the perspective tool to distort it. Blur it then put it onto the floor and put it to overlay. I go back to some of my objects to paint in more detail. One golden rule about image making that you should definitely know is our eyes are attracted to detail. So you should give more work to elements that you want the viewer to focus on. Because our brains tend to make less notice of the parts in the background that do not have that much detail. You can also take advantage of this brain cheating phenomenon when you want to create the impression of 3D. Put more work into making your elements look great that are in the foreground. If I add more detail, more contrast, generally more work to this table here, it will feel like it is closer to the viewer than those objects in the background. They will feel further away. Okay, what else is closer to the focal point? These lamps need some more work and so is this picnic basket. Then I move on to the center of the image. This is another focus point that you should spend a bit more work on. It doesn't have to be crazy detailed, but if you introduce a few more additional colors to some of these objects here, it will be just easier on the eyes. Then I experiment with texture a little. You can bring in some texture to the wall or to the floor. I don't use texture that much because I think it's very easy to fall into the trap of expecting heavy textures to do the paint work for you. By all means use textures but make sure that your composition doesn't rely on them if that makes sense. Okay, another thing I want to show you is how to bring in a realistic looking light source. You create a layer on top of everything and fill the layer with white. Then go to filter, render and lighting effects. Then you get this light source here. So you can change the color of this as well as have quite a few settings to play with. You can change the light source, the direction, the intensity, the shape of it. I click OK. Then I set this layer to screen mode. I erase parts of it to make it look like it's coming from the window. Also erase parts the light shouldn't hit. 
which is the four ground elements in my case. I zoom in one more time to give some additional details here and there and uh, I think we are done. There we go, I hope some of these tips can help you. I know it's, this is quite a lot to take in so if any of this didn't make sense or if it was too quick for you feel free to leave a comment down there and I'll try to explain everything. Okay, send a thumbs up if you like this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!